Unite these contenders for Home of the Year, and you can see more on Instagram and Pinterest. Need to improve a few things around your home? Why not talk to Permanent TSB about your options? What makes a house a home? Over the next eight weeks, 21 homes bursting with style and character will compete to be crowned Home of the Year. Each week, three homeowners open their doors to our expert judges, who must decide which one should go through to the final. Interior design legend Hugh Wallace has more than 30 years experience in high-end design. What we're looking for in this competition is functionality, individuality and clever design. I think there's a lovely feel to this space. It's a real surprise as well. Award-winning architect Declan O'Donnell is looking for homes designed for living. Homes really need to function for the homeowner because if they don't, it's just style over substance. For me, it's just lacking a little bit of character. I think it's a little bit safe. Maybe this blue. Helen James, textiles and homeware designer, has a passion for individuality. This is home of the year. We're judging the entire home. I want to see good design decision throughout the entire home. Wow. It just ticks a lot of boxes. But there can only be one winner. This is home of the year. This week, the judges will see three very different homes along the southwest coast. Looking for functionality, individuality and clever design, the judges will each score the homes out of ten. The home with the highest score will go through to the final at the end of the series. First, an unassuming bungalow with a surprising interior. Mo McGovern is a brand designer and husband Vinny owns and runs the odd job company in the local area. The couple decided to make the move from London to West Cork five years ago to be with their extended families. They bought a rundown bungalow and set to work on putting their own unique stamp on their new home. It was a standard type bungalow, very basic, but very well built. Apart from being really well built, it was really, really dark. And then Vinny said, you know, you've got to see the, the roof space, it's amazing. We can just open it all up. And that's what we did. It was about just take out all of the walls, the doors, the boundaries, and just let it as one big space so we can have some fun in it. I love colour, hence the jumper. <laughs> <laughs> we started with the staircase, and then it was the bathroom, then it was the bedroom. So, yeah, pops of colour. This is a complete immersion of Vinny and I. It's a little bit cluttered, but it's full of all of us and our stories from over the years. You can't underestimate the feel-good factor that a home can give you, like a beautiful house that's filled with your stuff. So this is Vinny and our favourite spot. We spend our Sundays cuddled up on the sofa here in front of fire. When the sun goes down, you get a lovely sparkling of stars. So yeah, I'd say this is our favourite spot. Highlighting their favourite spot is the homeowner's only chance to communicate with the judges. Scary thoughts about what a judge will think. It's our interpretation of a happy home. Hopefully they'll understand that it hasn't been put together, as it were, and it's just kind of grown into what it is. What a great location. Stunning. The judges must now assess the renovated bungalow, armed only with the basic facts of the property and its owners. It's a traditional looking bungalow from the outside. Mm -hmm. The mixture of materials actually on the elevation, you know, so it's a mixture of stone and plaster render. Which gives a nice contrast. It does, yeah. Looks great. Shall we go in? Yes. Oh, wow. What fun. It's bright. Yeah, it's great. Surprising actually the height in here because it looked like a traditional bungalow from the outside, but They've removed the ceiling here. You have this lovely gallery over the top. So the sense of space in here is like nothing you would expect from the outside. I just think the room has great personality mm. and these people have a great design sense. I like the collection of furniture and I think the colors are great. Because there are a lot of colors, but they've repeated the same color again and again throughout the space. So it all works together. 
I really love this bookcase, actually. It's a very clever use of the space that they had. It's an awkward space to try and fill, but yeah. they've just filled it full of fun stuff. Here we have their favorite spot. Ah. So you got the fireplace Fabulous. and the view. It's incredible, that view, isn't it? There's just no one. To, oh. The only thing I would say is the central frame that's there is it's kind of in the way. Two big square windows there I think would have really improved it because it would have given you that uninterrupted view at the minute. It's kind of in the way. It cuts right through mm. the view, doesn't it? What a fantastic kitchen. Mm. Great island. Isn't that fact? Polished concrete. Yeah. yeah. Big, chunky. Just great. Slap. Look at the detail of the light with the knives and forks. Isn't that fun? It's a really good example of how open plan living works because it's not confused, it's very considered. Because you have a clearly defined living space over there. That is a dining space that is clearly marked out that way and this is a kitchen which hinges the whole thing together. Mm. When you do it right, this is what everybody wants. We have dark grout, which I really don't like. I actually do like the dark grout. I think it really defines the tile. Just looks dirty. I think it's retro, and I think probably that's where the trend came from, from, a, from an underground, a dirty underground. But I don't want my kitchen looking like a dirty underground. It's a bit cluttered for me. It's quite full on. I just love all the details, like Mickey Mouse on the plate. They've put so much personality into it. It is pretty cool, but for me, I think it's a little cluttered. It feels a bit like a shop. That's what Home of the Year is about, seeing people's stuff. This bit, is the stuff is it a bit that mad? they use. I love having parcel items out there. I think it's really important, but I think they have to work in the space as well. It's not enough just to have them all out there. Oh, wow. He's a statement. <laughs> Great space. It's cool to actually get up here and have a look back, isn't it? Yeah. This is the cosy TV nook. It's a lovely space. Yeah. Right? Bedrooms should be a sanctuary. I would like to see the design aesthetic has been carried all the way through and that the bedroom is not forgotten. I just think this room doesn't work. Mm. You know, I think this piece is too heavy. It's very odd because the rest of the house works so well. It's the colour of the wall. While it's dark and very dramatic, I think the colour is actually throwing the room off. You pull the blue yeah. out of those walls, yeah. I think you have a different room. I think it comes back to the fun in the other mm. room mm. doesn't translate. Yeah, mm. I'd agree. This I like very much. Yeah, because it's dark, but you've got the sense of humour. What do you think of it, Hugh? I think this room is really crisp mm -hmm. in terms of the tiles, the shower, vanity unit. I just don't like this piece of furniture. I don't like the mirror. I just don't understand why you don't like the mirror so much. Well, I don't like the contrast in colour. And mm -hmm. secondly, I don't like the shape of the mirror. If you just had a square mirror there that was a functional white framed mirror, then you have no personality. I think that mirror adds personality. Where Hugh and I differ is I think he's more classic and I'm more contemporary. There we disagree again. <laughs> they must now individually score the home out of 10. They won't know what their fellow judges have awarded until they've seen all three homes, when all of their scores will be revealed. This is a great location and terrific views. The house is so normal when you arrive up to it, but when you come in, it's such a surprise. The way these people have collected terrific bits and pieces and put it all together. However, it's a house of two halves, great living spaces, disappointing bedrooms and bathrooms. I give this home a seven. I love the sense of humour and whimsy in this house. They've used colour very effectively and have fantastic pieces everywhere. And so have managed to make a large open space feel very warm and cosy. I think this house deserves an eight. The open plan areas and double height space really make this house. It's bright, fun and intelligent. In terms of style, it starts off so well, but for me, it then loses its way a little. It becomes less considered and slightly cluttered in places. Next, we're off to a striking split-level home set into the West Cork landscape. Retired couple Ita Malloy and Andrew Harvey live in a house designed by Ita's son, 
Don Ponig House. Andrew and I had holidayed here for a number of years. Then the opportunity arose when my son Don became an architect. He was very happy to design and build a house here for us. One of the main design criteria was that it would be a passive house and that it would also uh, fit into the landscape. It's a beautiful home to live in. It's a wonderful space. The airiness of this space that we're sitting in at the moment is just a joy. When Don, our son and architect, was designing our library to accommodate all our books, he created secret doors that take us from the public world into the private world. This is an attempt to make a concrete beautiful, which gives a wonderful feel of uh, harmony and nature to the room. We have many favorite places within the house, but our most favorite place of all is here, where everything comes together with the library at our back, the mountains here, the sea and Bear Island, bringing it all together. There is wonderful sound here. To lie back and listen to Rachmaninoff's concerto, it is just amazing. <laughs> It looks like a hay barn. A very modern hay barn. Yeah, but it looks terrific. For something that is so bold and it's up there, it's elevated, it's actually the perfect shape. So whoever has designed this has thought very carefully about what they were doing. The use of slate and the form of the building is just terrific. It sits so comfortably in the landscape. Wow, what a great space. Really calm. There's something so peaceful about it. The volume that's here, now that we're in it, is actually really impressive. We've got that huge picture window. It's breathtaking. You can't underestimate how important natural light is. What's great about this house is that they do it so well. I just think for Declan, it's all about the windows. These huge, big picture windows face east, so we have the morning sun coming in. Everything about glazing gets me excited, if I'm totally honest with you. Um. <laughs> the windows are all triple glazed. Mm. There's no radiators here, so I think this is a passive house. The thickness of the walls here, certainly the concrete wall running through the middle of the house, which is like effectively acts as a big story cheater. So that gets warm and it just permeates heat all day. So no heating bills? No heating bills, nice. no. Here we have their favourite spot. Mm. Ah. Easy to see why. Yes, you can really see the whole space from here and this amazing bookcase. And I love the fact that it's not really precious. Mm. You know, it's a used bookcase. It's lived in. I think I love this detail. Oh, Secret door isn't that fantastic? into the rest of the house. Oh, that's amazing. And it's that kind of detail that I think is really important in this competition. It's the execution of good detailing it is absolutely critical to a home. Now we're down here, we're actually seeing how beautifully detailed the staircase is. You can see that it's completely cantilevered off one side. It's mm. floating down this side, so it really kind of disappears. It becomes part of the bookshelf itself. Should we go into the kitchen? Yeah. The first criteria for a kitchen is, does it function well as a kitchen? The second criteria for a kitchen is, is it beautiful? I like the kitchen. I love the Belfast sink. And I love the glass as the backdrop. And I love the orange. Big splash of color works very well. But I think it's great in the space because it's the only piece of color in this mm. room. Declan, I think we have another door. We do. Ah. Oh, this way. Ah, through to the bedroom. Oh. Wow. Look at that. Isn't, this Isn't just that fantastic? wonderful? I love the way they've put the bamboo inset in there. You've got the leaves up here, the grass down here. And then when you get to the shower, you've actually got shells inset into the concrete. Love the bath being in the bedroom space. Mm. For me, I, I think this is a wow as a space. Mm. But in terms of functionality, I prefer bathrooms to be private. 
Well, I don't agree, Helen. I actually just love the idea of the bath there for two people. I think it's about romance and love. Do we really want to have our bath in the bedroom? Maybe Hugh is a bit more open than I am, but I personally like a door. If I was to criticise, I just think the floor finishes is odd because the way they've changed the floor, yeah. I just don't like that. For me, some of the details, I mean, the lighting, I can't understand how that happened while this was going on because the attention to detail and the fit out and the spec in the bathroom is so high. I think the problem is that the house is so perfect mm. that when something is wrong, yeah. mm. it just looks really yeah, wrong. absolutely. Now it's time for the judges to score the home. As before, one judge's score will be held back until they've seen all three homes. This house, to me, is what real architecture is all about. It's a beacon in many ways, not just because it sits on an elevated site, but because of what it stands for. It's kind to the environment, and they have sacrificed nothing in achieving that. This is a special house. I'm giving it a nine. This is a very harmonious house, both inside and out. There's wonderful attention to detail, and I love that. I felt protected against the elements, the owners have achieved a real sense of calm. I am very impressed. I'm giving this house a nine. I love the interior design. I think the detail is terrific. The hidden door, the bathroom, that splash back in the kitchen. The architectural form of this house is like a great hay barn. And the use of materials and the way it's grounded into the environment is just fantastic. Coming up. I'm not really loving any of the furniture in this mm. room. To me, it looks a little bit flat pack. Thank goodness for flat packs. I love them. Need to improve a few things around your home? Why not talk to Permanent TSB about your options? A few things around your home? Why not talk to Permanent TSB about your options? In 2012, planning consultant Leon Huelton and his wife Lorraine bought their family home in West Cork. Leon's goal was to reimagine the original farmhouse while embarking on an ambitious modern extension. We just fell in love with the old farmhouse. We just loved it and there was a big field up the back for the kids to play in and we said this is the place for us. I was able to look at this property and see the vision with the farmhouse, we wanted to keep it as traditional as possible, and then the extension is completely different. And that distinction is very important to us. So this is the original first floor of the old farmhouse, and there's three bedrooms here, and we turned it into our space and our bedroom, where we have a bit of peace and quiet from the kids, but we love our kids, but a bit of peace and quiet. <laughs> This family room is the heart of our home. Everything happens in this room, so I suppose this room had to be designed in such a way that would meet all of our needs. So this is our favorite spot in the whole house, really. We really, really love it here. You have the dining area, you have the living area, you have the kitchen area. It's the heart of the home, really. We really love it. It's just brilliant for our family. And it really was a special thing. Not every designer gets the opportunity to design something for their family. What I like about these drives is you get a sneak preview of the house mm. rather than the whole house. We are slightly voyeuristic and we like to see how other people live. To see homes that inspire us. I want to go into a home and be impressed. I actually like the way they've done it because they've preserved and maintained that original building. And the new part of the building is expressed as something completely different. It's a real contrast mm. between the old and the new as opposed to a pastiche. Yeah, exactly. And that's the way to do it. Nice big family room. Terrific, great kitchen. Mm, great countertops. And fantastic view. Mm. What I really like about here is the windows, but also the fact that they go right up to the ceiling, mm. which gets that drama and the sense of scale and light coming mm. in. Ah, so here's the favorite spot. Aha, I think we're getting a real idea of how they use this space. The kids run in and out of here on a good day. It's got a great big garden. I think that's what this is all about. Mm. I think this space clearly functions really well for a family. The furniture is a little bit plain. I think they could have put a bit more personality into this room. I think it's a little bit plain in places, but 
Again, it's a family room. All I'm getting is family. I'm actually not really getting a sense of personality. I'm just getting a sense that a family live here. And for me, personality is going to go a long way. Now, this is actually a great idea. You've got a little room off your living space. Uh -huh. You can just throw all the kids' toys in here at the end of the day. Look at uh, this. The, the little boy in you is coming out. Yeah. Coming there, out. It's coming out to play. Yeah. Sorry, Helen. <laughs> Young Declan couldn't stay away from the tractors and trailers in the toy room. I love the colour. <laughs> I love this wall. Isn't that great? Isn't that fantastic with all the kids' artwork on it? Mm. It's made kids' artwork into a real feature, mm. Mm. which is really nice. This is a really well-designed kitchen. Mm. This is a lovely detail where the countertop, the upstand and the windowsill are all in the same material. Mm. Really crisp. I just really like this chair. I love the texture of that wicker with the stone wall outside. I think it really works. And I think what really works is this transition mm. internally between the old house and the new. I think this is a lovely space. I love the colours. Yeah, I agree. Lovely palette. Because it's neutral, but it has life. You've got lots of hues of the same colours. They all sit together really well. What a lovely room. Ah, the master bedroom. What's really nice is the way they've opened this up. There would have been a number of rooms mm. here and the staircase, and they've now made it into their master bedroom. I'm not really loving any of the furniture in this mm. room. To me, it looks a little bit flat pack. Thank goodness for flat packs. I love them. For me, it's just lacking a little bit of character. I think it's a little bit safe. I just think you're being a bit harsh. I think it's very practical usable. I like this piece because it reminds me of an old chest of drawers. But I would have rather it actually be an old chest of drawers, painted gloss white. I was surprised at you in the master bedroom. I thought he was a bit more verve and a bit more romance and flamboyance in the bedroom. That's what we've seen so far. It was quite a calm and neutral space, so I have a lot to learn about him still. What I really don't like in this room is the mirror. Yeah, I'm not mad about the mirror. Mm. Thank God we agree. <laughs> I love the kitchen and the colour scheme and the warmth of this house. The entrance hall acts as a link between the old and new, and sometimes that can be very difficult to handle, but in this house, they've really cracked it. I give this home an eight. This house is all about family, and it's obvious that the owners have put that at the very core when renovating and extending it. Architecturally, the layout and design really work because it's simple. Ultimately, a house is about living, and the owners here have put so much thought into how they were going to live in this house, and I really like that. I'm giving it an eight. This is a great home, with lots of very clever solutions to family living, and I really admire that. However, the competition is tough, and I'm looking for something really unique, and at times, I found the interior decoration of this home a little disappointing. Now that the judges have visited all three homes, it's time to see how they measure up against each other. First, the renovated bungalow, where Declan held back his score. This was all about the element of surprise for me. When you came in, those ceilings that were raised up, this was a great example of open plan living, really working well. But for me, a bit cluttered in places, actually a bit mad in places, I actually give this house a seven. I would have hoped for a little higher. I gave it an eight, a seven and a seven. Total score of 22. Next, Hugh reveals what he gave the architectural split-level home. Design here is crisp, mm. modern, mm. and sits in a traditional landscape. I give this home a 10. Wow! 10? Yeah. Doesn't get any better than that. Two nines and a 10. That's 28. And finally, Helen reveals her score for the modernised farmhouse. I gave this house a 7. I, I think when you were going around, you could mm. feel that from you. An eight, an eight, and a seven. That gives a total score of 23. So the second home through to the final is the split-level home in West Cork. We have a very clear winner. We do. 28 points. I'm delighted that this house won. I gave it the highest score. It deserved it. Lovely piece of crisp architecture. Terrific. It's really earned its place in the final. Next week, the judges visit three more homes as the search continues for Home of the Year. 
And don't forget you can see more of the featured homes on Instagram and Pinterest and make your house a home with the smell of something sensational in the oven. Chef Rory O'Connell serves a bacon and cabbage with a difference in how to cook well next Wednesday night at half seven. Next though, over to the newsroom.